Hello everyone, I am Srinidhi Kukila. We will be discussing, welcome to the discussion on flight vehicle performance. So flight vehicle performance mainly in the flight of an aircraft there are four different segments that is takeoff, cruise, loitering and landing. So mainly we will be discussing about flight vehicle performance during takeoff. So welcome to the first session of flight vehicle performance takeoff. So our topic of discussion will be takeoff, ground roll, rotation, transition and climb. So we'll start off with takeoff. Takeoff flight phase consists of accelerating from the rest to a takeoff velocity and climbing to an altitude which is greater than a reference obstacle height. The distance required to accomplish this takeoff distance that is STO. The takeoff velocity is defined by the expression VTO is equal to 1.2 into Vs that's equal to 1.2 w by s during takeoff into 2 by rho cl max whole to the power 0.5 here vto that is the definition velocity during takeoff and w is weight of the aircraft s is the distance rho is the density and cl is the coefficient of lift it is here it is CL max maximum lift coefficient takeoff phases mainly uh, for analysis the takeoff phase is divided into four parts which consists of ground roll rotation transition and climb this is the schematic representation of the different phases of takeoff that is initially the uh, aircraft will will be at velocity v is equal to 0 and then it reaches to v is equal to vto that is velocity during takeoff so here in the diagram uh, in the schematic diagram you can see there are four different phases initially uh, the first one is ground roll and then which is having a ground roll distance of SG and then uh, rotation that is uh, horizontal ground distance during rotation is SR and then a transition transition will be having a radius uh, of the curvature R and the ground distance horizontal is STR then uh, there is climb with an angle of gamma uh, uh, and the end of climb the aircraft should be at a height of H obstacle so this takeoff the total takeoff distance as you have seen uh, the schematic diagram of the four different phases the total takeoff distance is the addition of uh, distance during ground roll, distance during rotation, distance during transition and distance during climb. So here what we are discussing is distance during rotation, transition, climb they are the horizontal ground distance. So next we will start off with the first phase of takeoff that is ground roll so this is the diagram representing the different forces acting during ground roll so the different force you have the usually the usual four different forces that is thrust which results in uh, the forward flight of the aircraft and a lift which results in the vertical uh, flight of the aircraft and uh, there is drag and then there is weight of the aircraft along with this in ground roll you have the frictional force also because 
the tires of the aircraft is coming into contact with the ground. So the ground roll, in the ground roll portion of takeoff, the aircraft accelerates from rest until it reaches the takeoff velocity, VTO. The ground distance required for this portion of takeoff is SG is equal to integration of 0 to VTO, V by A into DV. That's equal to half of V square by A from 0 to VTO. Here V is the velocity of the aircraft and A is the acceleration during ground roll. So the acceleration, the expression for acceleration is found to be G by WTO summation of F of X. That is G by WTO into T minus D minus FF. So here G is acceleration due to gravity. WTO is weight of the aircraft during takeoff, T is the thrust, D is the drag and FF is the frictional force. Next, the rolling friction force FF is given by the expression that is FF is equal to mu into WTO minus LG where WTO is weight of the aircraft during takeoff and LG is lift of the aircraft during ground roll. Here mu is the rolling friction coefficient which varies with the runway condition. For example, in concrete runway ground whether it may be wet or dry the value of mu is 0.03 to 0.05 in hard turf it is 0 0.05 in firm and dry dirt it is 0 0.04 in soft turf it is 0 0.07 in wet grass it is 0 0.10 and in snow or ice covered ground it is 0 0.02 so this varies from different runway conditions Next, another force is drag force. So the drag force consists of different uh, coefficients. So that as you can see in the expression, drag force D is equal to Q into S into different coefficients. So the drag force consists of base drag CDO and then lift induced drag that is CLG and uh, additional base drag produced by extended flaps CDO flap and additional base drag produced by landing gear that is delta CDO LG where uh, additional drag force produced by landing gear is equal to F of LG into ALG by S where f of lg is a correlation function that is based on takeoff weight of the aircraft and alg is the frontal area of landing gear and the value of f of fg f of lg is equal to 3.23 into square root of wto divided by 1000 Next is to determine the total distance covered during ground roll, one of the major function is acceleration. So acceleration, it is the one thing which is variable, which is the, one of the major variable in the ground roll distance. So Acceleration is a complex function, so there are two different approaches to find acceleration. Possible approaches that can be used to evaluate the acceleration. First one is to assume, assume that thrust to weight ratio is constant. Second one is to integrate numerically taking small velocity time steps. So first one, you have to assume that T by W is constant. 
then the acceleration will be a is equal to f1 plus f2 v square where you have you can see in the video f1 is equal to g into t by w minus mu and f2 is g into rho divided by 2 into w by s and you have all the coefficient coefficients of different forces so that is f2 so with that you can get the value of sg that is the distance traveled by the aircraft during ground roll you will get the value 1 by 2 f2 ln f1 plus f2 vto square divided by f1 so in the following approach a good estimation of t by w when the t by w is very good that is when t by w you will get the maximum value at 0.7 times the takeoff velocity so this is the concept of ground roll and also there is the second approach in order to find acceleration that is to integrate numerically taking small velocity time step over which the thrust to weight ratio is constant and equal to the maximum thrust at each upper time step value of velocity so usually the, in order to find the spreadsheet spreadsheet you usually go for the first approach so this is the concept of the first phase of takeoff that is ground roll next we'll jump on to the second phase uh, that is in a, in the rotation that is rotation so in the rotation part of the takeoff the aircraft angle of attack is increased uh, until you get the lift coefficient is 0.8 times the maximum lift coefficient so this is assumed to take three seconds usually time taken by the flight if in rotation phase is 3 seconds so during this maneuver the aircraft velocity is VTO velocity during takeoff the ground distance is given by the expression SR is equal to 3 into VTO 3 times the velocity during takeoff So next is the third phase of takeoff transition so in transition in the transition portion of takeoff the aircraft leaves the ground and flies at a constant velocity along a circular arc of radius r capital r rtr during this maneuver the load factor is given by eta tr is equal to l by w during tr that is a lift by weight of the aircraft during transition that is equal to 1 plus vto square divided by g into r tr where l by w l by w after substituting the value of velocity during the full length vs uh, after substituting you will get the value is 1.15 the expression for r that is arc radius r is equal to vto square divided by 0 0.15 g so with these expressions you get the horizontal ground distance covered horizontal ground distance covered during transition that is equal to str is equal to rtr into vto into sine gamma cl so transition portion ends at gamma is equal to gamma cl gamma is the angle of the flight angle of attack of the flight du during the flight so here gamma is equal to gamma cl and the altitude at the end of transition portion is htr is given by the expression 
आर टी आर इंटू वन माइनस कॉस गामा सी एल सो दिस इज द ट्रांजिशन फेज ऑफ द एयरक्राफ्ट सो नेक्स्ट विल कम टू द लास्ट फेज ऑफ द एयरक्राफ्ट दैट इज क्लाइम सो द क्लाइम पोर्शन स्टार्ट एट द एंड ऑफ ट्रांसिशन एंड एंड वेन द एयरक्राफ्ट रीचेस अ प्रिस्क्राइब आल्टीट्यूड दैट इज हेच ऑब्स्टेकल सो Throughout this portion, the climb angle is gamma CL. So the uh, h obstacle is gamma CL. So the climb angle 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 the angle the climb angle gamma cl is continued from the transition phase therefore from geometry the horizontal ground distance during climb is given by scl that is equal to h obstacle minus htr divided by tan gamma cl the prescribed obstacle height is 50 feet uh, uh, for military aircraft and for civil aircraft it is 35 feet the aircraft design with low wing loading at take off it is possible that h obstacle altitude is reached during the transition portion so in order for you to get in order for you to Uh, get better h obstacle you have to eliminate this climb so that you can decrease the value of h obstacle so these are the different phases of take off so in this lecture video we have discussed about we have started about the take off the main performance during take off and uh, the di four different phases of take off that is ground roll rotation transition and climb if you have any doubt you can comment below thank you